So yeah, it's Friday. It's five o'clock at night. I just got a notification that there was some stuff next door. FedEx guy dropped it off over at the landlords. I'm already long gone by five, but you know I had to come back for this. I heard there was something good in there. Let's go see. Yeah, I'm used to being here at five o'clock in the morning, not five o'clock at night. That's all good. It's kind of nice. So we got some boxes here from Demore Engineering. Nothing out of the ordinary. Except this box right here. The shape of this box is not ordinary. Normally they look like this. This one does not look like that. And it says this side up, whoops. Maybe I should have put it in there, that side up, not sideways. Probably be okay. I probably ain't gonna do nothing that those monkeys didn't already do on the way here. So, let's bring this stuff inside and see what's in them. Alright, this side up. wonder what that means. Well, I know what it means, but I wonder what that means as in what's in here. Let's open it and find out. All right, I sort of have a clue what this might could be, but I'm not sure. I saw something online, but he says it's a surprise. He didn't tell me anything about it, but I think I saw something online. I don't know if it's that thing or not, but if it is, that'd be pretty cool. If it ain't, well, we're going to find out anyways. So, I'm a little opening here. How do I get in this thing? Feliz Navidad. I think that means like Merry Christmas in Spanish. Oh shit, we got Merry Christmas in English right here. And a nice little Christmas tree. Oh shit. What is this? The heck? Okay, well first of all, Whatever it is, it's got a handle on it. Okay, I'm gonna bring it over here to the table. All right, well, first of all, this thing is not what I thought it was, unless it fits inside of this case. This looks like some kind of tools or something. I don't know, but I'm getting a little sweaty around the collar, so we're gonna have to shed some clothing for this one. And don't get all excited. All right, here we go. What is this? Okay, we got a towel of some sort. Or uh, something. Alright. I know what this feels like. I know what it feels like. There's no way it is what I think it is now. No way. <laughs> oh Lord. Look at that. Oh my God. Look at that. Ooh, 
boy. What do we have here? Oh, it's mounted to a board and everything. Look at this. All right, it's getting kind of late. My grandkids are over at the house. I came over here to grab these packages and what a surprise. So tomorrow morning when I get here, I'm playing with this thing more. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like on the inside and we're gonna hook it up and play with it. This thing is no joke. A DeMore Engineering 1500.4. You guys aren't ready for this. And by the way, not everything has to be a 20,000 watt amp to be fucking awesome. And that's fucking awesome. All right, here we are the next day. We're at the shop. We got the heat jumping off because yes, it does get a little bit cold over here. No, you don't think it does, but it does. We're getting it over here though. Yeah, I know you guys are hard at work. It's Christmas Eve and all that good shit. But uh, you ever touch or see a $9,000 car amp in person? $9,000? Besides the T15K. A current amplifier. I only have two hands. I opened this up the other day, man, but why don't you come on over here and open it for me so I can hold this camera. You guys can both. Sorry, man, we got a little bit of noise up in here from that. I should just turn this off, huh? Sorry, guys, there goes your heat. That's my little trick in order to get them to turn the heat off. Burning up all my diesel all day long. All camped out over there by that damn thing. All right, back at it again. All right, man. I got this for Christmas from my boys Tony and Juan, Demore Engineering, and um, I looked at it. Yeah, yeah. Come on, I want you to open it. Check it out. Then we're gonna put it on the bench. We're gonna hook it up and look at it, play it. You're gonna hook it up? Yeah, yeah. I made a spot on the bench. I think I kind of have an idea what this might be. You've never seen one of those in person, have you? No. I Nobody didn't. has. This one's white. I didn't want to touch it. The Demore Engineering 1500.4. Yep, oh, yep, no yep. Way. Pop that bad boy out of there, man. What do you think, Kay? Is that good or what? Oh, yeah. Look at me behind the camera today. Love it. Go ahead, man. It's okay. If we break it, I got the right people. <laughs> this is class A, class A, B. Oh. Woo. I don't think they're ready for this. I, I believe it's a lot closer to the class A, B section now. It used to be a lot of class A in it. They had to scale it back. <laughs> Look at you can't even get it out of there. There you go, yeah, it's mounted on a board too. You can just take that whole thing and just uh, set it on the table right there. You can take that board off of it. Unscrew it for me if you don't mind. What do you think, man? Is that good or what? I can't believe how heavy it is. We'll do that right here. I cannot wait to light this thing up. All right, KK wants to know why this amp is so expensive, and um, it's really hard to explain. Wow, Tony. But if you read the description, you can see some of the reason why. Not many amps like this at all. All right, well, we need a wrench for the bottom. Look it. Now keep in mind, a $9,000 amp isn't always gonna be the most practical thing for everybody. But this is just to show that he can. But he's also working on a whole other lineup of amplifiers that are going to be a lot more affordable and a lot less um, super, super high end. They're going to be high end, but a little bit more affordable for the average person and still top of the line because you know Demore doesn't play around, period. Look at this. I'm going to pop that thing off the board. Look 
it still heavy without the board? All right, we got the scale. Go ahead, just, you can throw it up on the counter, I guess, right? Let's see how much this thing actually weighs. 1,500 watts. Make sure it's all zeroed out and all that stuff. Where are we at, Kay? Okay, let it settle. All right, we're zeroed out. Stop. Drop. Good. Look at those aluminum heat sinks. I suspect there's gonna be some cool lights doing stuff in the middle. And I don't just suspect that. I already kinda know. I've seen this app before. These guys are my partners. But I never owned one. I never got to hook one up myself on my own bench before. And it's mine because it said Merry Christmas. Hey, if it says Merry Christmas in the box, does that mean I get to keep it? Sure Fuck that. Hey, yeah, yeah, they ain't getting it back. It's mine. It's one amp that's never going to see the boneyard. Ever. It'll sit in my office before it goes in the boneyard. No, it's okay. Just put it right on that board. It's fine. All right, let's go to the boneyard and see if we can find another 1500 water amp. Any 1500. Now this doesn't mean one amp is better than the other, it's just an example of how heavy this amp is compared to a typical 1500 watts. We got some Rockford 1500 BDs. We got, uh, what do we got here? Right here. Not this. Oh, uh, cab 1600.1. You can bring a cab. Grab this uh, SAZ 1500 plastic right okay. here. You can bring that. Nothing wrong with the sundown. You grab that, uh, grab that Rockford BD 1500 right there too. You got enough hands right here? It's right here. There's one, one in this box right here. Here. A couple of my favorite amps sitting over here. But this is just an example of the difference in weight. Well, like I said, this doesn't mean one amp better than the other, it just means the difference in weight, the amount of parts that's in this. Go ahead and weigh this thing with it still in the box. Foam, base knob, instruction manual, everything is still in there. We'll open it and show you guys. All right, so 17 pounds. What was that one, 27 point what? 27.5. Yeah, so this one is 10 pounds lighter than that one with the box and everything in it. Let's uh, grab that punch amp over there. With the box and everything. Thirteen. So that one is 14 pounds heavier. All right, let's take these out of the boxes and see how much they weigh, just the amp alone, with no carton. Good. Now this Rockford 1500 might weigh a little bit more with the end bells on them, not much. I would give it about six ounces or something like that. I actually have some end bells up there somewhere, but either way, the end bells are just cosmetic. Go ahead, put the Rockford on there, and let's see. It's dusty. Keep in mind, favorite amp of all time, this BD-1500. It's not even a CP, it's an old school BD-1500. 12 pounds. So that amp is 15.5 pounds heavier. All right, let's go ahead and put the sun down on there. 15.5, damn, that's a lot of parts. Okay, so what was it, 17 with the box? 15.5 so 12 pounds so this thing is 12 pounds heavier 12 pounds doesn't sound like a lot but I mean uh, kind of is when you're talking about copper and aluminum parts it's a lot of weight just in parts good shit good shit I do love these amps so nothing against them
We're talking simply weight here only. All right, let's hook that thing up. So I bought this thing on a last minute whim. I just wanted a good crossover real quick. Short notice, there really wasn't anything out there at the store any good, so I bought this. I know it has high level ins only and low level outs. I figure that's all I really need because that Sony deck does have a lot high level outs. I was just going to hook them up. But since I only use the high level outs on my test bench to run the test bench speakers just so I know what song I'm playing, I only use the fronts. I guess you need the front and the rear hooked up in order to sum them together and get the sub channel out. It really wasn't working that great for me so it's now a couple of days later and I got some proper stuff over here that I bought and here it is right here. So we're gonna pull these out of the box. These aren't all for this project. I got some of this for another project but I mean really this 2XS I think this is all I really need. I got a 6XS too. And basically, this right here is the version of what I just showed you, except for it doesn't have high level inputs, just the low level. So I could use this as well if I want to. All right, so the classic 6XS and the classic 2XS right here ready to go. I got a special project those are getting used on. They will work just fine for what I'm doing. But this right here is the same version of this, except for it is actually closer to a real crossover. It has crossover dial on it and everything else. This one has high level inputs only. This one has low level inputs and this is exactly what I need. Enough playing around. I gotta hook this up. I gotta hear what this thing sounds like. I can't wait. So, time to rip it out of the box. Let's see what it looks like. I'm mainly in it for the guitar picks. This should work perfect. Cool. So we got the front coming off the head unit and the subwoofer coming off the head unit. That's all we have here. And we can't forget the ACR3 base knob. Make these wires look good for the video. All right, this thing's hooked up, ready to go. Power supply is on. Let's watch it light up for the first time. Here we go. Let's see, D, where you at? There we go. Woo, she pretty. Oh yeah. We got the audio control, DQ, DX right here. Now I'm the only one filming today, so this is not gonna be very easy for me to do by myself and actually show you what's going on, but I'll do my best. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the gains. We'll find out what it's coming out of the head unit first because that's very important. You people that think you can use a digital voltmeter, you need to find out what the deck is doing. That three quarter bullshit is just bullshit. Find out what the deck is doing, then we're gonna find out what this crossover is doing, and then we'll send it out to the amp and adjust the amplifiers. All right, so we're gonna pluck the subwoofer outputs from the head unit off. We're gonna read those first.
All right, don't mind the little buzzing sound you hear down there. That's my power supply. It's not the amp, it's not the crossover, it's not the speakers. That damn loud power supply, but it's okay. We'll turn that off when we go to do the listening test. So here we go with this right here. This is the bass from the head unit. We'll turn that up. You have 40 hertz detected. I'll turn this up and I should hit. 49 is dirty. 48 is clean. 49. 48. So we're clean right there. Okay, so we know 48 is a good number. Let's go ahead and take this right here off the highs. Let's see what that's doing. So we're going to change the track. Track 2. This one goes all the way to 50. 49 dirty or 50 dirty, 49 clean. 50, 49. 50, 49. All right. So we know that 48 is a good number because that's where the base is at. We'll just keep it all clean. It's good to go. So we'll run off 48 for our number. Take those off. Turn this down. We're going to plug this back in. This is the highs. The base right here. So now we're going to see what's coming out of this thing. And we'll see what's doing here. We're going to go ahead and do the, uh, we'll do the subwoofer first. Uh, no, we'll do the highs first. So we'll plug into that. We'll plug into this. Since we know this head unit is good to 48. I'm going to turn this down too as well. well we're turn actually, we're turning this one all the way up here. Turn the fronts all the way up on this side. All the way down on this side. Because we want to let, we want to know what this is doing while this is wide open. And then once we get to that area, we'll check that one. So, I'm going to bump this up to number 48, track 2. We know we're good there. We're not showing anything because this dial has not been cracked yet. So I'm going to crack this. Look at that. Just like that. As soon as I crack this, you start to see it. So you're taking four volts in and look at how much output I'm getting out of this thing before it starts to distort. Seven volts. We don't need none of that. I like a healthy five volts on almost everything unless I have a lot of amplifiers sharing the same signal. 5 volts is great. So um, we got that set up there. That's easy. That's done. And then over here, these are wide open. So I guess this right here can be used to turn it back down if you needed to. So we'll bump right on over here to the base. Okay, so now subwoofer all the way up. ACR3 all the way up as high as it'll go. We want to let everything through. So this one goes to about six before you start seeing distortion. So we're going to back this down to five where I like it to be. Damn. So we got five volts on the lows, five volts on the highs. We basically got a super healthy head unit coming straight through here. No problem. And then watch what happens when I turn this base knob down. So you know that we're wide open volume. Look at that. Turning the base knob down. The volume is going down. Look, nothing. That's why it's important to use this and use it right. If you don't set this knob up right, you're throwing everything you did out the door. So, bam, we're clean all the way up. We turn that back down, turn it back up, we're good to go. Like I said, subwoofer out right here, all the way up. No need to touch that at all, in my opinion, right now. So, this is good to go. Let's go ahead and set the amplifiers up. We'll plug these right back in. This right here is going to be the base. Put that back up again. Let me turn this down all the way. All right, so just that quickly and just that easily, we know the maximum output of this deck, which is the main, the most important thing you can possibly know when you're setting your gains. We have clean output coming out of this thing all the way through it. 
100% all the way through it, no problems at all, with the knob turned all the way up. Now, it's time to set up the amplifier. We'll adjust the gains just right, and then we'll turn this thing up wide open and let it play. And you'll see the reason why it's so important to set your gains. We don't really want to listen to these things making a loud noise while we're setting the gains, so we'll just disconnect one side. Like I said, keep in mind, any buzzing you hear right now is that power supply. And even though it sounds loud, it's clean, none of it's going to come through the amplifier at all. But I will turn it up. I got a cap bank. I can shut it off while the cap bank is still hot and we can get some silence in here whenever it's time to listen to it. So, so we've got this here. We're going to turn this up to 48. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this gain all the way up. Look at that. All the way up. And then we're going to hit read. Then we're going to change tracks. We're going to go to track four. Bam. Normally I would have my highs at around 5 dB, but I know that these speakers cannot handle this amp at all. So let's do like, I don't know, 3.5. Turn that down to about 3.5. All right, so we're on the bass side now. We're gonna go back to track one. We're gonna reach over here. We're gonna turn this bass knob all the way up just to make sure we got all the juice. Gains all the way up, hit read. And change to track three. All right, so now we're gonna start backing that down. Normally I do about 10 on my woofers if it's a good match, but these woofers also are not a good match for this amp. They can't handle it. So we'll do, let's do five. So five on the bass, 3.5 on the highs. Oops. We got five on that side. Let's jump over to the other side. Gains are still all the way up, so I still got the same overlap. Turn that down, five. Five what we said, let's do that. Five, bam. And just to show you it's all working the way it's supposed to, let me go ahead and turn this knob down. And as I turn this down, watch what happens. No overlap. There we go. Nothing. So I'm turning it all the way up. Five. Start turning it down. Look at that. There it goes. All the way up. All the way down. Simple as that. All the way up all the way down so really this thing is ready to play basically the subwoofer is set for 90 and down the mids and highs 90 and up I'm not gonna mess them I'm gonna leave them flat because I just want to hear what this thing sounds like flat let's turn it on let's listen to it can't wait
important lesson in all this. When you set up your system, you should be able to turn that thing all the way up to your number, the number that you know is your distortion point, and play all day long with no problems. That's yeah. what gain overlaps are for. You don't just go in there with a voltmeter and go, oh, my amp puts out 3,000 watts at this voltage, and my speakers are four ohms. No, it doesn't really work like that. You need to know what the deck is doing. You need to know what the crossover is doing. You need to know what the EQs are doing as soon as you start touching those dials. And it all has to be set at zero dB until you get to the amps. So none of that other stuff makes sense. So go get yourself a SMD DD1 Plus, a standard DD1, or in the very least, get an O-scope and learn how to use it. All right, here goes another quick one. This is with no subwoofer at all. I want you guys to hear the mid kick on this completely flat. Money over suckers, over money suckers, duckers. Where I'm from, we learn to get the work before they touch us. Sherbet in a diamond got me coughing like pertussis. Baseline a swipe, game time, I'm getting buckets. Drove dragon, what a dope bad one, thrash swagger. Fresh kicks, murder scene, uh, tote tag. Got them hooked like fiends with that coke cabin. Looks something like a Lambo when I blow past All right, before I cut out of here, I know you guys are going to complain that I just played rap on an $8,500 amp. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Sonically, the album is mixed awesome. Shout out to Hallway Productions. You know how we do it. But I'm going to play something, one of my sound quality go-tos real quick on the way out of here. I can't really do this stuff because of the copyright issue. But I'll play a little bit of it and chop it up and you'll get an idea, maybe. I might have to listen to it through headphones, but... Either way, I'll play something a little bit nicer since you may not like rap. All right, so we got a little bit of Thomas Dolby, Pulp Culture. It's one of the tracks I use when I'm demonstrating a little bit of sound quality. Not that I'm a sound quality expert, but this stuff does really sound good. So we'll hit play on that. Lovely. Catch you on the next one. I'm out of here. Hey, let me get some thumbs up for this video and I'll make another follow up video opening this bad boy up. 8,500 bucks. The more engineering. And you can hear that class AB goodness coming out of there. Man, it's noticeable. <laughs>